Welcome to today's special edition of Frightfully Forgotten. But to start things off, what are you drinking today? The Dark Crystal. Mm. <laughs> Munich Dunkel. It is October time, so we're going to be doing our special batch of October Halloween-styled episodes. Countdowns and top fives. General theme this year is going to be the Universal Monsters. To start things off, our first episode is going to be five underrated Dracula movies. <laughs> Number five on our list, uh, Dan Curtis's 1974 Dracula with Jack Palance as Dracula. <laughs> <laughs> the best thing about this movie is that Jack Palance doesn't play it like that. Yeah, exactly. He kind of underplays it and doesn't Jack Palance up the rule too much. <laughs> I really like the fact that he's kind of more of a tragic Dracula. He's not so much a monster. He's not really monstrous in this. And he's lonely. Yeah. Like, you get that sense that he yeah. just kind of wants, like, his old love back, right? Yeah. And that painting of him, too. <laughs> <laughs> he's all on that horse. It all looks exactly like him. The atmosphere for this movie is really good. There are lots of fog and dungeons and the castle. In Dracula's castle, and they got to, like, fight a couple of vampires. They got to yeah. fight hard. Harker, too, which is kind of neat. Harker's there as a vampire. Yeah, and they Protecting gotta... Dracula's lair. Yeah, yeah, and it's kind of cool. Yeah. A little bit of a different spin on that. They sort of stick to the general timeline, I guess, of the original book. They don't follow it all that close. Yeah. Like, the it, story itself. It deviates, but where it deviates kind of makes sense. Yeah. I like it. Yeah. Know? So just for you there, Grumpy Andrew, we know you're asking for more Jack Balance. <laughs> And it didn't make number one. <laughs> and I. <laughs> the next on our list, number four. <laughs> 1974's Blood for Dracula, also known as the Andy Warhol Dracula. Yeah, he, he could have been Dracula. He's all. He looks like <laughs> fucking Dracula. He's all gaunt and yeah. pale. He and... looks undead. <laughs> <laughs> Now he is dead. <laughs> this is probably one of the only movies on our list that isn't serious. This is kind of like a dark comedy. Yeah, yeah. And it's very, it's done in the, a sort of a subtle way. Yeah. But you get the comedy. Like the comedy comes through. Yeah. It comes off as tacky, but mm. really it's almost purposely campy. Yeah. And it doesn't follow the usual Dracula story. And yeah. Just the plot alone, it's funny, where Dracula needs the blood of a virgin, but this farm guy keeps having sex with all the virgins, and then Dracula's <laughs> yeah. got nothing to drink. Yeah, and he's, he, he keeps getting duped as well. Yeah. Like, the girls keep telling him, oh, yes, I'm a virgin, I'm a virgin. And he, you know, samples the blood, and he gets all sick. And... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> It's like super overdone, yeah. too, and he's puking in that tub and all that. <laughs> and Udo Kier as Dracula. How can you go wrong? German accents helps with the comedy, too, yeah. because they're just normal lines. But when you give that give it that German accent... Kind of funny. <laughs> yeah, a little bit. I can't eat this food. He said it remind you of Tommy Wiseau. <laughs> Udo Kier's performance. Yeah, yeah. Almost exact. <laughs> And that's the thing about this movie. It is just fun and funny. And the gore is really good in this movie, too. We also have a VHS Tales episode on Blood for Dracula, if you want to check that out. <laughs> All right, number three on our list. The 1931 Spanish Dracula. It was shot at night after they shot the original Dracula with Bela Lugosi. So they would utilize the exact same sets at night, bring in Spanish actors, do the scenes again. I do think that the Spanish Dracula is actually a better film. Shots are different, there are different angles, and certain things happen in different ways, and it has actually, it's longer. It makes more sense. The pacing is better. As much as I love Dwight Fry, I like the Spanish Renfield better. And I actually find the sound better, because Lugosi version is very hissy, and I find the Spanish one's a little bit easier to listen to. 
Still no soundtrack, though. No? <laughs> that was the one thing that's missing from that movie, was music. Next one on our list. A polarizing movie, because some people think it's just complete garbage. <laughs> but we look at it at a different light. Dracula AD 1972. The movie starts off in the old days, right? Late 1800s, but then it quickly fast forwards to 1972 London. The movie is about one of the kids is into all this occult stuff and they end up bringing Dracula back to life. Van Helsing's yeah, yeah. descendant, which is played by Peter Cushing, uh, has to hunt him down and, and be rid of yeah. him. And as kind of cheesy as the movie is, I think it's a breath of fresh air. <laughs> yeah, it's you know, something Because different. how many times has Hammer done that Dracula movie in the 1800s? All of them, Yeah, basically. with, with that yeah. same type of movie score, with the same settings, you know, those old taverns and the old castles. And this yeah. one's like, oh, okay, just something different. The soundtrack is different. It's that 70s, yeah. It's, <laughs> yeah. I really like the music. It's really <laughs> yeah. fun. And as much as I think they tried too hard to make it contemporary, yeah, it's still a lot of fun. You have to take it for what it is, right? Yeah. I like the kind of last battle between Van Helsing and Dracula. He's, yeah. Van Helsing's chasing him through that that kind of tower, and mm -hmm. then he's all old and out of breath and everything. I like how they do that too, where like he is old, yeah. you know, and so then they kind of use that in the movie, right? And they yeah. don't try and hide it. And it leads us to the last one. Seventy nine Frank Langella Dracula. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. This one's a masterpiece. The pacing of this movie is really what sets it apart from the rest. Because mm -hmm. it knows where to take the source material and to use it and when to disregard it. it starts off super action packed with the, the storm, mm -hmm. the, the ships in the storm, and that guy's tied to the, yeah. the steering wheel of the boat. And, and then the hand comes out and rips that guy's neck. Yeah. Like, oh, yeah. <laughs> when I saw that, I was like, ooh, baby. Yeah. <laughs> come on. And come on, you got Donald Pleasance in there. Oh, fuck, yeah. Laurence Olivier. Yeah. It's like just an incredible Van Helsing. Dirty and dreary looking like that era would look. It makes you feel like you're in that time period too, right? Yeah. And it's almost like a black and white movie. A lot of the night shots look black and white, even though it's actually not. Yeah. Which is a really cool way of doing it. And then there's that crazy sex scene where it's all <laughs> psychedelic and all the <laughs> red 70s. lights and everything. <laughs> the music is really good. It's big contemporary orchestral score. They made Van Helsing and Seward related to the girls. A neat spin too because these characters are have a real vested interest in killing Dracula. Yeah, more so than in the book. Langila as Dracula is great, and he's probably the first guy to play Dracula, maybe besides Udo Kier, <laughs> who you can believe as being like a seductive person, you yeah, know, because yeah. he's actually he's a good-looking guy. And yeah. The women will want him. Yeah, as opposed to like Bela Lugosi, like, oh yeah, you're a very attractive old creepy bastard. You yeah, know? you need to use your mind powers, yeah. you know. <laughs> yeah. With him, he doesn't have to use his powers. Yeah. You just come a call and... Yeah. <laughs> That's our top five underrated Dracula films. A couple of honorable mentions, because we did a lot of research, and we watched a lot of shit. <laughs> yeah. We sifted through a lot of garbage to, <laughs> to get to these top five. And there were a couple that didn't make the grade. The one I watched, and I told Adam not to bother, was the uh, 1977 BBC Dracula. It's really good, but it's really fucking long, too. It's like two and a half hours long. It sticks to the story perfectly like almost like you're reading the book yeah if you haven't read the book and if you want to watch a movie that's close to it fine but it's like oh two and a half hours long of the story that we already know everything about it's like yeah. no I, I, yeah. <laughs> I just can't do yeah. it <laughs> and the one i watched which i told justin don't bother <laughs> watching uh was the 1970 count dracula also known as the mustache dracula <laughs> On paper, it looks like it should be fucking amazing. Yeah. It's got Christopher Lee as Dracula, 
playing Dracula a way he's never played Dracula before is more like the book and less of a monster. And he was excited to do it. Klaus Kinski's in it as Rainfield. It's like, okay, how can you get any better casting than that? Yeah. Herbert Lom plays Van Helsing. It's like, okay, the Herbert Lom's great, but the movie fucking sucks. <laughs> it's like... It's okay in the beginning, because the beginning is some cool sets and this cool castle. And it's okay, I'm really digging this. And then they get to London, as they always do. And it just gets so boring, and it makes no sense. <laughs> and the guy who you want to say something, Klaus Kinski as Renfield, has no lines. They gave this guy no lines. Like that part with <laughs> Herbert Lom, where they, like, they couldn't defeat Dracula the first time, and he's sitting at some desk, and he looks at the, <laughs> looks at the camera, and he's all... <laughs> suddenly he's just in a wheelchair in the next <laughs> scene it's like what happened to him did he have a stroke or <laughs> a lot of potential but sh shitty <laughs> sh shitty product uh, that's too bad now that we're done our underrated Dracula movies we're going to talk about some of our favorite Dracula yeah. movies we might as well if we're on the subject so what's one of your favorite Dracula well movies? Uh, of course you got to mention the 1992 Francis Ford Coppola one, right? Yeah. We were kids when they came out. That's kind of our generation, Dracula. Casting with Keanu Reeves and Winona Ryder is not the best call on that. But yeah. still, overall, the movie's pretty good. Almost no CGI. I don't think there's any CGI in the movie. Probably not at so that time, yeah. It's all practical effects. They're done very well. And fucking Gary Oldman's Wicked Dracula. Yeah. And, you know, some of uh, my favorites, and I think yours too, are a lot of the, the Hammer ones. Oh, yeah. The yeah. original ones with Christopher Lee, like horror of Dracula, Dracula, Prince of Darkness. Mm. You know, Christopher Lee brought Dracula back from the dead. So that's our mm. special Dracula episode of Frightfully Forgotten. Let us know some of your favorite underrated Dracula movies or just favorite Dracula movies in general. Yeah. Until next time, keep drinking. <laughs>